The E-test, which uh, was formerly called as the Epsilonometer test, is basically a manual diagnostic tool um, that helps us identify the MIC or the minimum inhibitory concentration um, of a particular antimicrobial agent. Um, it is also uh, used to check the susceptibility of a bacterial or fungal colony or a bacterial fungal growth uh, against a type of uh, antimicrobial agent. So the e-test is a standard diagnostic tool that, that is used in vitro, obviously, and um, it will, uh, it's commonly used for anaerobes. So the previous test that we, uh, we've discussed so far in our previous sections usually were concerned more with uh, aerobes because they were broth or um, egg medium tests and usually used for cultures that grow rapidly or are aerobic in nature. But the e-test is commonly used for anaerobes and this just shows uh, the uh, susceptibility of anaerobes against a particular antimicrobial agent. So in this section, we'll discuss the anaerobes that are tested for antimicrobial sensitivity, uh, how in E-test there are strips involved and those strips are actually impregnated with antibiotics of different types. So this uh, principle is somewhat similar to the disc diffusion test. And then we determine the MIC. As I mentioned earlier, in every test, the uh, level of antimicrobial activity is actually checked by checking the minimum inhibitory concentration of the antimicrobial agent. So the E-test um, is basically a test that was uh, formed by a company known as Biomerix. Uh, it is used in sensitivity testing and it is easily used with anaerobes. So as you can see in the figure that I've given, there is a strip that is present and the strip is usually put onto the agar medium and the clear zone around the strip just shows the concentration of the uh, antimicrobial agent um, which kills the bacteria. So there is a clear zone around that concentration and beyond that concentration, um, as you decrease the concentration, um, the uh, bacterial growth can be seen. So as you can see here, so at this concentration, there is growth, but after increasing the concentration to even one point, you can see that the clear zone starts and it starts increasing as you keep on increasing the concentration of antimicrobial agent. So um, the test is commonly used for anaerobes that grow poorly in broth culture. So that's why they are grown on the egg plates. All right, the anaerobes tested for an antimicrobial sensitivity, uh, we usually apply E-test to anaerobes inoculated agar plates. Um, you can see there's Staphylococcus aureus, Enterococcus facilis, Escherichia coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And you see that there is a strip that's um, put on the center uh, of the agar plate and the clear zone around the strip just determines the activity of um, the antimicrobial agent at a particular concentration that can stop the growth of bacteria around it. So the test bacteria are individually inoculated onto the entire surface and then the E-test strips are placed on the surface which are extended out radially from the center. So the strips are loaded with antibiotics and each strip has a gradient of antibiotics. So as opposed to the, um, the disc diffusion test in which the disc had antibiotic loaded with, with it uh, or loaded on it and um, the antibiotic on the disc was of same concentration. So as opposed to that, the strip has a gradient of antibiotic which, which means that at the start of the strip, the antibiotic concentration is more as compared to the end of the strip where the concentration slightly keeps on decreasing until it's, you know, close to zero. So they are labeled with the minimum inhibitory concentration values. 
lowest concentration slip lies um, at the plate center so that's how you put the plate so that uh, how, uh, that's how you put the strip so that the lowest concentration of strip lies at the center of the plate and you can see that the uh, zone of no growth actually determines um, the MIC value uh, at that particular point. So after 24 to 48 hours, it depends on uh, the type of pathogen that you're testing. Uh, the incubation pe period always depends on the type of pathogen that you uh, are picking up. So it can be from 24 to 48 hours. Um, the uh, elliptical inhibition zone appears, as we have seen previously. Um, the MIC, which is determined from the point of intersection between inhibition zone and strip scale of MIC value, is the point uh, which we take, and it hel helps us um, identify the concentration of antibiotic that is ideal for growth, for stopping the growth of uh, microbes in that particular point. So. Whenever we're talking about a type of test that requires uh, the antibiotic to be present at different concentration, it actually helps us identify the lowest quantity of antimicrobial agent that will uh, stop the microbial growth without causing toxicity or without becoming a lethal dose for the host cell. So it's important and that's why determination of the MIC is um, one of the major principles behind every um, test that is done again for the antimicrobial agents. Uh, there are different types of other tests that are commonly used and there are different types of uh, microorganism population that uh, help us identify which type uh, of test can be ideal for it. There are different types that also identify the resistance um, obviously, if no elliptical inhibition zone is formed, it means that um, the microbe is resistant to the antimicrobial agent at every point. And so um, it means that that antimicrobial agent cannot be used against or for the microbe in any concentration. And uh, you need to also determine... Uh, this, the figure here basically shows the optimum amount for critical care patients or the optimal amount of um, uh, antimicrobial agents that can be used. Uh, this also shows the resistant uh, resistance detection, which means that the resistant phenotypes of particular pathogens can be determined. And um, uh, there are different automated systems for example, uh, in e-test and in a uh, distribution test, we actually um, identify the susceptible zone. We identify the resistance detection. We also uh, identify the organisms that against which the test can be used and how um, certain tests can be used for critical patients or how we need to develop a broader MIC for a type of patient. So all these tests are important for therapy. As I said earlier uh, at the beginning of this lecture, the testing is important because before releasing a type of uh, antimicrobial agent into the market, you need to determine its lethal dose. You need to determine its therapeutic dose. Um, you need to determine the class of pathogens that are highly resistant against it or that are highly susceptible for it. And you need to determine the MIC and MBC of that antibiotic agent before it gets released into the market. And so whenever uh, there's a new antibiotic, uh, all of these tests have been done for that. And whenever there is a patient with with the type of um, uh, infection. Initially, the test is done just to identify the pathogen so that the ideal test or ideal antibiotic can be used without um, antibiotic being given freely and just uh, using the hit and trial method um, for <clears throat> killing of a particular pathogen. So in this particular section, we uh, uh, studied another test that is known as the e-test or the epsilometer um, diagnostic test that was its formal um, formal name 
Now it's just termed as the e-test and it's one of the standard tests whenever we are talking about anaerobes. Previously, in our previous sections, we discussed uh, usual tests commonly employed against aerobes, but e-test is a ideal for anaerobes that cannot grow in broth and so they need to be grown on um, agar medium and also um, uh, in e-test, uh, the concentration gradient of antibiotic is pretty important because this shows the, uh, this actually helps us identify the MIC value pretty easily because there are clear markings on it and those markings can uh, just uh, uh, tell us the MIC without us calculating any or plotting any graphs as uh, we do in uh, the um, distribution tests, etc. So in today's lecture, our focus on uh, focus was to determine the activity of antimicrobial agent and to determine the effectiveness of antimicrobial agent. We covered uh, some major commonly employed tests and we saw how the principles of each test was somewhat similar, but there were variations in it and those depended uh, on the type of pathogen that we are testing against or the type of antimicrobial agent that we are using. So that's all we'll be covering in today's lecture. Thank you for watching scadia.com.